we were doing studies um, focusing on neurological injuries um, such as stroke and traumatic brain injuries. And, you know, COVID caught us by surprise, like everybody uh, back in early 2020. And at first we were um, thinking about the hypoxic or low level of oxygen injuries um, for the acute patients. And we did some research on uh, acute COVID uh, patients. And as long as we went, um, almost half a year after, we started seeing those patients with chronic symptoms, people with cognitive deficits, emotional issues, sleep issues, physical disabilities, and you know, feeling fatigued and exerted and brain fog, all of a sudden starting to get piling up of cases all of a sudden. And back then nobody called it yet long COVID. Um, and people said, you know, we're not sure what's going on. And that kind of uh, hit us by surprise. The more we learned about it, and I think even until today, we're not really sure what's the pathogenesis or the pathophysiology of long COVID. We have three main theories of what's going on. Um, one of them is the actual hit or injury by the virus that it actually injures specific areas in the frontal lobe or the orbital frontal areas. The other one is revolving around inflammation, um, meaning that, you know, the reaction of the body to the virus increases a lot of different uh, cells and cytokines, which are messengers that really cause a storm in your brain. And that chronic inflammation um, causes dysfunction, again, in specific areas of your brain, along with other parts of your body, obviously. The third one revolves around something like tiny strokes, where you're thinking about different vessels or blood vessels that are being occluded because of hyperviscosity, meaning the, the blood is too thick than it's what's supposed to be. And it caused like tiny strokes. We started managing them. And I think people still do, you know, so people have different symptoms. It may be depression. It may be cognitive dysfunction. It may be what we call post-exercise malaise, meaning basically we're not able to train at all or to do any exercise. We're just too tired to do them. So people started um, attacking those symptoms from with different medication. Oh, you have depression? Let's put you on an SSRI or anti-depression. Oh, you, you, you're fatigued? Let's put you on a stimulant that may arise you. Um, you're not sleeping well? All right, let's put you on a sleeping pill. And the problem with this approach, it targets the symptoms. It's not targeting the pathophysiology. Like I said, you have specific dysfunction of areas in your brain or areas in your muscles, in your heart, that you don't really heal them. You don't really help them recover. You're just trying to manage the patient, you know, to walk it off and hopefully um, the body will heal itself. And to us, that was, you know, it may help some of the patients, but again, we're kind of masking the symptoms under the rug and not really treating what's going on. We're just trying to mask it. Um, so then we decided, all right, if we're thinking about chronic inflammation, if we're thinking about dysfunctional areas that was caused by regardless of which theory, perhaps what we found for recovery and regeneration in other brain injuries can actually be applied here. So that's what led us to start a randomized controlled trial with hyperbaric oxygen therapy to try and recover those injured areas, meaning to actually target the pathophysiology. Because what we have learned from other brain injuries, we've learned we are able to generate new blood vessels and to generate new nerves in those pathologies, reduce inflammation. So again, can we actually apply that in low long COVID syndrome? So that's what we did. We did a... Um, a randomized control trial, we took a lot of patients, over 60 patients, and we split them to two groups. 
half of them received the hyperbaric oxygen therapy protocol, which is a unique proprietary protocol, specific one. And the other one received the sham. In the original study, we treated them for three, two months, 40 sessions. That's five daily sessions a week for eight weeks. Um, and we monitored all their symptoms. They filled out different questionnaires. They perform cognitive assessments, objective ones in front of a computer. Um, and they perform brain imaging to see where is the actual brain injury. And after two months, we repeated everything, exact same tests that they did in the early uh, in the baseline, we did them at the end, and we found significant improvement. These guys improved in their cognitive function, they improved in their emotional symptoms, whether it's depression, whether it's anxiety, whether it's, whether it's their sleep abilities, whether it's their pain, their ability to, to deal with their pain on daily day to day. Um, overall, their quality of life really, really improved, but more importantly, we were able to correlate it with actual improvements in brain regions. In the, those exact brain regions that we discussed earlier that are injured by the COVID, again, choose which theory you want, these specific regions were improved and recovered using the hyperbaric oxygen therapy protocol. So the end, um, you know, the primary endpoint of that study was indeed we were able to improve cognitive function and well-being of long COVID patients with 40 sessions. Later on, we found out it really depends how long have you been suffering from long COVID syndrome. So the patients in, in the original study had long COVID for less than six months. So if you're having the symptoms for less than six months, since you, um, you were injured by COVID, you can be treated with 40 sessions. However, for patients that we received afterwards that were suffering from long COVID for a year or more than six months, we found out that we actually need to treat longer for three months with 60 sessions rather than 40 sessions. So, and we kind of made the six month period as the cutoff point of when are you going to treat with 40 or 60 sessions. 